back in 2008, Mateo was born, happy, healthy, strong set of lungs, 10 fingers, 10 toes. Shortly after, he started vomiting, his little belly started to swell, and he wouldn't eat. They did biopsies and other tests and found out that he has a rare intestinal disease called Hirschsprung's. It's a lack of nerve cells in the intestine. They ended up having to remove Mateo's entire colon and about half of his small intestine. He was given a 30% chance to live. He has surgeons, gastroenterologists, dietitian. He will have these doctors and specialists following him for the rest of his life. He gets sick and ends up in the hospital quite often. I would say once every few months or so. I get anxious, he gets anxious. We both know it's coming even though we try to fight it. So when it's time to go to the hospital or if he's starting to feel unwell, he tries to hide it from me. So I have to either figure it out myself or it has to get so bad that he can't hide it anymore. And that's because he has medical PTSD from all of the procedures. What has helped him is knowing that Barb is here, our child life specialist. She will come in before any procedure, before any surgery. She talks to Mateo about his fears and helps him work through them. She also brings him crafts or books or even toys, prizes, to keep his mind off of those unpleasant procedures that he's about to endure. Every time you hospitalize a pediatric patient, it can become a traumatic experience for them. Mateo's pretty much defied all odds. He's a true living, breathing miracle. He's had 11 surgeries since the time he was born up until now. There's a certain point that, that there's not a way for a child to cope with continuing to go through this illness. I never would have imagined that anything like this would happen to me or my family until it did. Mateo would not be here today as a happy, active nine-year-old if it wasn't for us having this local hospital and having the staff and the equipment here that was able to provide the care that he needed. When I first came, the whole concept of child life being necessary for all the services we provide to children was inherently visible in what we did as nurses on the floor. Often we meet kids in surgical services who are coming in for surgery for the first time. Our goal is to prepare them for what that's going to look like. So we'll teach them about anesthesia, about how the doctors are going to be helping with their body and what they might be feeling or experiencing during that time. We have an I spy book or bubbles or something where they are fully engaged in play and less aware of what's going on. And that helps our medical team's job go smoothly and they use less resources and the child walks away from it with improved coping and more compliant for the next experience that they're going to have in the hospital. It's better that they have child life here because then they have a lot of toys so that way the, pe the people that go here feel less scared because then they have stuff to play with afterwards. We meet them right where they are, we find out how they're coping, and then we help them to cope better and more successfully by giving them information and helping them to process um, what's going on in their each unique situation. We have the gift of being able to be present and not asking anything of that child. So I'm not a nurse coming in that has to give this immunization or a physical therapist who has to have a goal set. To be able to have child life here, to be able to provide that little bit of comfort, the little bit of distraction, truly makes a huge difference in the experience for the kids. As an adult, I couldn't imagine going through what these kids go through on a daily basis without having child life. In this role, there are only two of us covering um, the pediatric unit and beyond. And I would say every shift at the end of every day, there are a handful of things that I was not able to accomplish because we're overstretched. Two child life therapists are not enough and we actually would like to continue to grow the program and sustain the program moving forward. We do not charge families. Uh, we don't bill their insurance. We are a free resource to families. We are fully funded by Children's Miracle Network and uh, rely on community support and involvement to help keep this program afloat. We wouldn't exist without that support. We are incredibly appreciative of this community support and the support from Children's Miracle Network. And my hope is to see it grow and to see it grow quickly into a program where we can offer child life to every child who needs us. The hospital, the staff, the child life is truly saving children's lives. Barb makes stuff really easier for me here. 
Child life is necessary. It is making a difference to our children. You never know when an emergency might affect you or someone in your family, and we want to be there for you and for every child who comes here to Riverbend. You don't get to see your donations, but I get to see your donations every day in the work that I do and every day in the reactions that patients and family have. I just want to truly thank our community for supporting Children's Miracle Network and helping us take care of our children and our families. Thank you for supporting Children's Miracle Network and kids like me.